The rupee has touched a fresh low of 82.62 in opening trades. Thereafter, there's been some Reserve Bank intervention. But the rupee's weakness was expected after the U.S. unemployment data for September came in a surprisingly low 3.5%. The estimate was 3.7%. With the U.S. Uh, job market likely to remain hot, wages high, the Fed is expected to only continue its tightening spree. Uh, there is going to be an impact on all economies, Asia, India. To discuss that impact, we have with us uh, Chetan Ahia, the chief Asia economist at Morgan Stanley. Good morning, Chetan. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, I read your report saying that Asia is not that badly uh, impacted. Uh, can you tell us where this confidence comes from? Well, essentially what we are saying is that, look, this is a very different cycle compared to 1997 or 2013 uh, in the sense that Asia's macro stability indicators are in a much better shape and Asian governments and uh, central banks have not really taken up loose fiscal or monetary policy to the same extent as they had done. Especially if you think of it in 2013, after 2008, there was an aggressive fiscal and monetary policy easing across the region. And we had seen a big pickup in leverage. We had seen a big deterioration in macro stability indicators such as inflation or uh, current account deficit. If you take India's specific example, uh, we had uh, current account deficit going up to about over 5% in December 12 quarter. And at the same time, inflation had been running close to 10% for about uh, four years at that time. So we don't have those, those kind of, that kind of situation in this cycle. And therefore, we think that Asia is uh, doing much better. And then the market's verdict, if you look at it, if you look at the trade rate and exchange rate for the region as a whole, it is down just about 2% in this cycle uh, versus about 13% decline in 2013 and uh, a, a much sharper decline in 97, 98. So I think the currency performance is also telling you, you have to look at currency performance on a trade weighted basis, not just against the USD. No, I take your point uh, that there are several macros which are no, I mean, we are not in the fragile five uh, discussion at all like we were in 2013 or, I mean, the Asian crisis of 1997, which was much worse. But uh, uh, let's take only India. There is a current account deficit issue, even if it is not as bad as above 5%, it is above 3%, whereas our normal Lakshman Rekha is 2.5%. Uh, wouldn't that be a worry, especially if it got compounded with, uh, uh, you know, capital flow, capital outflows like it was in June, July? So, look, I think the, the recent trade deficit and current account deficit numbers have been priced to very high levels of oil prices that we had seen immediately after uh, Russia's invasion into Ukraine. Uh, but after that, oil prices have come down, uh, even after the oil, oil production cut announced by OPEC+. Plus, uh, oil prices are still below $100. So, if you, say, if you still see oil prices below $100, uh, we think India should be able to manage a current account deficit, which is in the in the ballpark of three percent, uh, which is a little bit higher than two and a half percent number that, as a threshold, has been identified by the RBI. Uh, but it's not that far off um, uh, from that uh, manageable level of two and a half percent. So we think that it will mean currency depreciation pressures, but it won't be uh, such that it causes uh, a ma major shift in the central bank's monetary policy in a disruptive manner. Okay, I was coming to the Indian uh, uh, Central Bank and uh, the Indian growth story. But before that, a word on what's Morgan Stanley's view of uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, rate hikes. Uh, do you expect as much as the dot chart indicated that it's 75 and then a 50 in uh, December and another perhaps 25 in March or even a 50 in March? Uh, is that the in-house view as well? Yeah, uh, our forecasts are very similar. So we are expecting the Fed to take policy rates to um, 3.6 to 5. Uh, so call it between the band of 3.5 uh, to 3.75. And in the next meeting, we're expecting 75 basis points and the meeting after that 50. And then in January, we're expecting another uh, 25 basis points. So by early next year, Fed would have uh, reached its peak policy rates of three point, uh, sorry, 4.6 to 5. Well, actually, you know, after the jobs data, uh, the CME Fed Watch uh, monitor is indicating slightly higher bets. Of course, the percentages are still low, but people have pushed up bets for more hikes. 
Uh, now, if it pans out this way, I mean, if it pans out even at 4.45 or 4.75 on the Fed funds rate, uh, won't it have an impact on uh, what the uh, uh, Indian Central Bank has to do? So, look, I think in terms of the market's expectations, markets are currently pricing anywhere between 65 to 7% for the RBI. And for the Fed, it is pricing around 4.65 to 4.7. Um, and the way the currency pressures will build for the, uh, for the central bank would be on the basis of the expectations of policy rate for the Fed and expectations for the policy rate for the RBI or whatever the RBI guidance would have been. Uh, now, based on uh, this uh, outcome, we think that incrementally the pressure should reduce as long as the Fed pricing doesn't go up further from here. And as I mentioned, our forecast is for the policy rates to peak around 3.6 to 5. So we are in sync with markets pricing, uh, and we are not expecting further rise in uh, markets' expectations for policy rates. If that it does, does happen, then there will be more pressure for uh, the rupee and therefore uh, consequently pressure on the RBI. And on the RBI's uh, policy rate forecast, we are expecting it to take policy rates to 6.5% uh, with some upside risk of maybe another 25 basis points hike. Uh, but that's where exactly the market is. So um, I think we are, we are okay as far as the current market pricing is concerned. Okay, fair enough. After, I mean, just as a matter of detail, after the jobs numbers came out and unemployment was even lower than what, uh, I mean, even lower than August and lower than market estimates. Uh, did you all, uh, I mean, is there an upside bias to your uh, estimates? Uh, more likely 475 is the uh, terminal rate in uh, uh, US? No, we haven't changed, uh, Lata. We, we were building in for a 75 basis point rate hike and the terminal rate at 4.625. And uh, we are maintaining that. Uh, of course, you know, uh, Fed as well as us, uh, we will need to watch the data going forward. And if you get series of upside in unemployment rate or other downside in unemployment rate, uh, yeah, that would make us change, and that would probably also make the market change the pricing for the Fed policy path. Okay. Uh, but with this uh, small little, um, you know, surprise on the unemployment rate. Look, as far as the jobs data is concerned, wage growth actually was well behaved. It was uh, it was still 0.3% month on month, which is 3.6% annualized. Mm. And year on year went down from 5.2 to 5. Um, and job sprint was 268 yes. um, versus consensus of 255. So there wasn't a whole lot of upside surprise in the in the jobs data, except for you know maybe a, a, a tenth or two tenths of uh, downside in unemployment rate. Uh, that's what probably spooked the market. And uh, preceding that, there were hawkish commentary or hawkish statements coming out from the Fed policy speakers, and that in combination uh, made the markets a bit more worried. Uh, but as such, if I just take the data on its own, it wasn't really that big a surprise for us to make a change in our forecast. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, I'll, uh, time permitting, I'll come back to that, uh, the impact that the uh, tightness in the credit markets can have. But for the moment, the India growth story. Uh, would you worry that uh, the global markets are heading towards uh, a recession or probably near a slowdown, and uh, that can have an impact on exports, that can have an impact on, uh, which can have a multiplier impact, impact on India's domestic growth? That's right, Lata. So we are expecting, uh, you know, DM GDP growth to be just about 30 basis points in 2023, uh, with US at 50 basis points uh, positive and Europe at 50 basis point uh, contraction. Um, and UK would be about 90 basis point contraction. So DM growth is going to remain extremely weak in 2023. And that will mean that exports outlook is not looking good for the region as well as um, India. Um, the advantage that India, of course, has is that it has also got significant dependence on services exports. Uh, that tends to be a bit more defensive, doesn't see that much of a deceleration like you would see for the goods exports. Uh, but then never, nevertheless, India will still see, still see downside from um, exports and uh, its consequent impact on some negative impact on the manufacturing capex too. Okay. So we are expecting India's growth to slow to 6.2% um, uh, in the next financial year. Uh, and, and for the current financial year, we are at 7%. Um, 
Okay. Uh, well, just a quick one. Uh, it look, looks like we're running out of time. Uh, you know, the tightness in the credit markets, you saw the BOE having to intervene uh, against its uh, promised uh, uh, sale of bonds, it had to come in and buy bonds. Uh, there is a lot of tightness even in the U.S. markets uh, with uh, yields, for instance, on, uh, you know, even on uh, for treasuries, the credit market appears to have tightened. And of course, uh, for the real economy, uh, home loan rates have doubled. Uh, do you think that this tightness in the credit market can create some financial accident? So look, I think there are there are risks of uh, financial uh, markets tightening in um, countries other than the U.S. a lot more than the U.S. itself. Um, in the U.S., uh, yes, we have seen uh, tightening in uh, financial conditions, especially for credit markets. Uh, but the the dynamic that we have for the corporate balance sheets is very different in this cycle. So, for example, high yield uh, uh, space, which has um, which, is, which would be called uh, the riskiest space within the corporate uh, borrowing segment. Um, that, ha that segment has uh, just about 10% of its debt falling in due over the next two years. And uh, which means that, you know, bulk of the borrowing has been borrowed, taken up at low fixed rates um, before this time. And at the same time, the interest coverage ratios are close to all time high. Um, so we think that the economy in the U.S., especially from a balance sheet standpoint, in a very different position, and so that, that would be able to withstand and not have a significant uh, recessionary risk. Okay. All what we are arguing is that this will mean slow growth, okay. uh, but we're not concerned about a, a deeper recession this time because of uh, tightening of financial conditions. Okay. No, I read a goodish bit of worries about uh, the credit market uh, just becoming dysfunctional and that creating problems. But that discussion for another day. Chetan, just leave me with the last number. How bad does it get for the rupee? Do we cross 83? Uh, I don't make the rupee okay. forecast, but yeah, I would say that, you know, it's, it's co completely dependent on the dollar. Okay. Uh, we think that the idiosyncratic pressures on the rupee are much lesser in this cycle. Okay. Uh, it's more really a function of what happens to DXY, and it's just a broad trade-weighted dollar that's what is going to weigh on the rupee. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Chetan, here for joining us. We wrap up with uh, the stock market still under pressure, 1.2% gone. But we could see some recovery after all the U.S. is not trading today. Wrap up on Bazaar Chartbusters up next.